Hey y'all, this is Elizabeth back with another episode of Empowerment with Elizabeth and today I am here with my friend Lauren Van Landingham. So Lauren, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. I'm so glad you're on this podcast. Y'all, Lauren is my little um, for my sorority from undergrad at the University of Mississippi and also one of my good friends and we roomed together one year too. Indeed. And she's going to talk a little bit about um, her community service work. Um, she is a community service queen. So Lauren, tell us a little bit about your work with charity. So she was VP Foundation. She did pageants. She wrote a book. Explain to us all of those amazing things on your resume. Yeah. So growing up, I was very involved not only with pageants, but with also Girl Scouts. And through both pageants and Girl Scouts, had the opportunity to get really involved in my community and specifically in areas that interest me. Both organizations were very empowering in the way that I was able to learn about my strengths and weaknesses and how I could use them and strengthen them to better my community and better things that I'm passionate about. So that became my focus with my platform and my Girl Scout Gold Award project being a million letters um, in a combination with Stories of Hope Be the Light. Um, million Letters is an organization I founded and um, with the whole goal of having cancer pa- patients help other cancer patients through their treatment just with their advice and their encouragement for those newly diagnosed patients and took some of that advice and turned it into a book for my gold award and was thankful that even when I went to, off to college I was able to find communities of people that were also very passionate about community service and was able to be VP Foundation for Delta Gamma this um almost a year ago now. (laughs) Amazing, amazing. We love that. So tell us a little bit about why you selected your platform. Yes, so my platform was selected because my mother is a breast cancer survivor and my grandfather um, has survived cancer twice. And because of that, we are as a family, we've kind of been given back in many ways, whether it's donating money, donating resources, being someone to drive somebody to treatment, just finding ways to get involved in the cancer community. And we always joke, it's the club that nobody wishes to join. It's really, it's a tight knit community that they try to look after each other as much as possible. And that's kind of how I decided. I was like, I wanna make sure that not only people have the physical resources they need, but also having those like, um, that emotional and mental support um, just with cancer being such a draining journey so that's kind of how I decided that that would be my passion project love that yeah close to home okay so what is your favorite thing that you've done with your platform I think one of my favorite things I've done with my platform is getting to work with so many different age levels of people a big part of a million letters was the written letter component so I have I have talked to kindergartners all the way up to senior citizens and been able to have them write their words of encouragement. And from those kindergartners, it's like, I I hope you feel better. And from the senior (laughs) citizens, you get some of these heartfelt notes about their experiences, but all of them equally is just meaningful and impactful when you're going through that cancer treatment, just knowing that all these people, even if they're strangers, are there, there for you through that hard time. Yeah. Okay, so talk a little bit about how your platform has opened doors to other community service opportunities and inspired you to continue to be involved with community service. Yes, so first of all, community service is not, I think one of the, my favorite things about it is it, while it's so good for your community and that should be a great reason to get involved and volunteer and find something you're passionate about in the first place, but it's also great at just opening up those doors because of my Girl Scout um, Gold Award project and because of my, um, with its combined efforts with my platform, I've been able to be nationally recognized as a National Gold Award Girl Scout, getting to go in the Today Show, um, listen to um, the International Day of the Girl at, um, at the United Nations in New York City, getting opportunities to just continue to speak on my platform in public settings, whether it's on a podcast like this or in front of large crowds of people or even the small, tight-knit Girl Scout troops. So I've been so thankful for those opportunities and has kind of led me into my future career path. Yeah. So if you could give someone trying to decide what platform or social impact initiative to pick, what would be one piece of advice that you would give them in picking what cause to support? I think my biggest advice is no no idea is too small, too minuscule, because those actions can add up and be so impactful. 
yeah. the whole reason for my platform it started just as a letter writing campaign it was mm-hmm. just trying to get people to write letters and I would take them to the hospital and it transformed into this whole community that we built of cancer survivors mm-hmm. and later turned into a book that now is sitting in hospitals around the country so while that like first idea of just getting people to write letters was so small that there is so much of a snowball effect about when you're getting involved with something you're passionate about that people are going to want to pour into passionate people so just be flexible with it and see whatever see wherever that takes you love it okay switching gears a little bit what was your favorite part about being vice president foundation so talk a little bit about what initially made you apply for that position and then to also talk about what your favorite part with that position yes yeah, so um i always say that um being vice president foundation is probably one of my favorite leadership positions i've had <laughs> it's um it was a labor of love and i i i know what it's like to be even just a family member of someone going through a hard time or In high school, I worked with our high school's team of um, kids with and without disabilities and just knowing how some of the littlest things that we might overlook, like going to class or um, just being in public places, just how many of those little things are not truly accessible to everybody and all those minor inconveniences really do add up. And so with VP Foundation, we serve Service for Sight and Gallant Hearts and um, both serving the visual impaired community. And it was really great to connect people who have never been connected with it before. I had I'd never been personally affected by visual impairments. Right. Um, so I just like really loved bringing life to an issue that was so much bigger to girls that maybe not didn't join, didn't join DG because they wanted to really pour into this community, but gave mm-hmm. them a reason to. And um, now years to come, maybe maybe the next time they see someone who's visually impaired, they'll know the proper etiquette on how to act around a guide dog, or maybe they can how just connect be, with them. Exactly, yeah. being a helping hand in some way. So that was a really rewarding part of that experience, just seeing how at the beginning of the, my term, people knew very little, um, but by the end of it, people having some knowledge on it and being um, being excited even. Yeah, so true. Okay, so talk a little bit about what ways you're currently helping out around your community at Ole Miss, in Oxford, or back home in St. Louis. Yes, so currently I am Vice President of External Operations for um, Ole Miss's Rebelthon, which is a 12-hour dance marathon benefiting the only children's hospital in the entire state of Mississippi. Mm -hmm. So um, whether that means you have a NICU baby, um, if someone's um, going through a traumatic injury, um, that's the hospital that these children are expected to go to, and that being the only one in the entire state is kind of mind blowing to yeah. me. Um, I grew up in an area with world class healthcare, literally mm-hmm. minutes away from my house, and so the fact that I have the opportunity to pour into the state that has like welcomed me in with open arms has just been so rewarding. So. Um, with external operations, I get to work with our hospital advisors, work with these miracle families that have benefited from it, and it's truly just been a rewarding experience. But I just I'm looking forward to our, our big event coming up this February so soon. Woohoo! Kids yeah. can't wait. Love exactly. That. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, so give us our last question. Give us a piece of advice for someone who is wanting to get involved in their community. How can they start? Where can they start? Who can they reach out to? What are the steps to getting involved? One of the best ways is just finding finding a mentor in any capacity. A lot of times these mentors have like pointed me in directions. I'm volunteering for this walk. Come join me. Um, so if you're if you're a leader and you're listening to this, be that mentor for mm-hmm. somebody younger or somebody looking to get involved. But if you're younger, just know that a lot of these people would love to mentor and help you and connect with them. And you might not know what you're passionate about, but they might be able to help you connect that and get there love it yeah love it well thank you so much for coming on the podcast this is so much fun i'm so glad that we get to hear some of your wisdom about community service we we all know you're the community service queen so so glad i got to chat with you and i will see you guys on the next episode and i will see y'all later bye guys bye